I'd like to start off by explaining what my goals for the Coilgun project are. My goal is not to achieve high power. I've seen quite a few other attempts at a coil gun, and for the, at least the majority of them, their issue was not that they were lacking in power. Most of these other coil guns that I've seen, or that you may have seen across YouTube, they tend to report efficiencies of around 3 to 5%. So these systems, they have enough power, they're just not efficient enough to actually use the power to expel the projectile at reasonable speeds. So being that no system can boast about efficiencies of 3 to 5%, I think that that should be the primary concern. So my goal in this project is not necessarily to be extremely powerful, but it is to produce a coil gun with a higher efficiency. This being the case, I need to seriously retcon some things that I've brought up before. In the previous video of this series where I'm trying to make a coil gun, I proposed a new coil geometry, one that was very different from anything you would have seen on any other kind of coil gun. People seem to like it, or to at least be intrigued by it, but just to, to rip off the bang date, I guess, it's inherently flawed. It's not gonna work. After putting weeks of thought into it, I realize that it just does not align with the goals of the project. Allow me to explain why. I previously proposed something like this, an altered coil geometry whose windings favored one side, specifically the front. This representing the cross section and these areas would be the coils. The idea with a coil geometry like this is that the effective center of the electromagnet would be right around here, somewhere very close to the front. When I say the center of the electromagnet, what I mean is that this is where the projectile would be pulled to. If you just left the coil on for a good amount of time with the projectile in it, it would settle with its center of mass at this point. At first glance, this seems to be a, a novel idea because one of the biggest problems with a standard rectangular coil geometry is that the projectile wants to be in the middle and the back half of the coil isn't really used for anything. Though it's possible, I guess, that something like this could be used for a high power system or I don't know, something like that, it doesn't align with, with what my, my goals for this project are. Because something like this is inherently inefficient. You just can't get around it. And the reason for its inefficiency is pretty straightforward, and I can't believe that I didn't realize it right out of the gate. So to explain that, let's say I have an electromagnet over here. This is my electromagnet, and then I have a, a piece of steel somewhere over here. If this is my electromagnet and this is my steel, you have a pretty great distance between them. Because the distance between them is so large, the force pulling the steel towards the electromagnet is not very high. Now if we have a second scenario, where we have another electromagnet, same size, same current, same everything, and then we have another piece of steel, same properties as the original, let's say it's right here instead though, and now you have a very small distance between them. In the second scenario, everything is the same except the distance is closer, and we understand intuitively that the force applied to the block of steel will be considerably larger because they are considerably closer. Now it's important to understand that in both of these scenarios, despite the very different forces, both of these electromagnets would be using the same current applied by the same voltage. So the same power is being used by both, except one is applying far less current than the other. So that being the case, this scenario, this second scenario here, is far more efficient because it's using the same amount of power, yet it's applying a far greater force. And this scenario will be made even more efficient, assuming your goal is to apply the greatest force to the block of steel if you move the steel even closer. And that explains why this is so inefficient, because the projectile will begin its, its travel right back here at the very base of the coil. So then you apply current to the coil and your projectile is pulled through the barrel. The thing is, when the projectile is at the base of it, it is exposed to very few of the windings. Only everything in this range-ish is, is actually applying a force 
to the, to the projectile because all of the other windings are just too far away. And then as the projectile travels further and further, it gets exposed to more and more of the windings. So then it, the greater force is applied to it as it travels. So at the beginning, there's a small force. At the end, there's a very high force. Yet, throughout the, the entire duration of the, when the, the, the coil is on, the same current is running through it. You always have the same current at the same voltage, no matter what position the projectile is at, yet the projectile feels very different forces. So for the majority of this, of this coil, from like here on back, it's extremely inefficient because the majority of the windings are not affecting the, the projectile whatsoever despite draining a ton of current. So if you had high hopes for this weird looking coil geometry, I apologize, it's not gonna work at all, or at least not for what I'm trying to do. Though I do have some ideas that I think could be the, the missing link in making an actually efficient coil gun. So the new idea is kind of the opposite of the previous one. Instead of having one long coil, you instead have as many coils as you possibly can within the, the allotted distance. So imagine this is a coil, again, this would represent the cross section, except that each of these individual cells here would be their own coil. So in this design, the thickness of each coil would be considerably less than the length of the projectile itself, maybe a third, maybe fewer. The reason I have such high hopes for this is the same kind of reason that you want your block of steel to be closer to your electromagnet to apply a higher force. Making a coil gun is a game of centers. You really don't care about anything other than the very center of a thing. So for the projectile, I don't really care about the length. All I really care about is the center of mass because that's where the electromagnet will have the greatest effect or for the actual electromagnets. I don't really care about their length, I really just care about where the center is because that's where the greatest force can be applied. So the goal for this coil gun, based off the simple fact that having your ferromagnetic material closer to your electromagnet means a greater force and thus a greater efficiency, is to have the projectile, or at least a center mass projectile, as close to the uh, the center of the, the electromagnetic center, I guess you could say, at all times. So if my projectile, when in the beginning of its travel, is something like this, in this range here, the center of its mass would be right around there. So now for this one, I would only want this single, this single electromagnet to be turned on because the center of the electromagnet is slightly, slightly in front of it. Since it's just slightly in front of it, it would apply the greatest force possible as opposed to having all of these ones turned on. And I do, I think that this idea is one of the primary issues with a standard coil gun design. It is common that the, that the uh, coil will be approximately the same length as the projectile, if not longer. What this means is that when the projectile is in the center of one coil and is being pulled to the center of the next coil, there's at least half a projectile distance between the center of mass of the projectile and the, the, sen the electromagnetic center of the next uh, coil. So then the potential force between the two is, well, at the beginning very low and then variable as it goes. The force would just go up and down and up and down and up and down as the projectile travels throughout the coil. So what I'm proposing is that the ideal, the absolute perfect conditions for a coil gun would be that you have infinite coils within a given distance. That way you could finally, finally tune it so that, uh, so that each coil turns on only so that it is exactly in front of or at the center of mass of the projectile. That is the ideal. And that way you can apply a constant force to it, not a force that's accelerating and hard to, to map. And that constant force not only means zero recoil, but it means a greater efficiency, a considerably larger efficiency, I'd imagine. One of the initial problems with this is that being that your coils are smaller, 
it's possible that they couldn't handle enough current. There just wouldn't be uh, enough mass to take for, for the, the cooling elements to take away the heat. But for something like this, you have a lot more fine control over it, assuming you have many coils. So you wouldn't necessarily only need to turn on this middle electromagnet, you could also turn on the ones adjacent to it, and the, cent the, the electromagnetic center would still be in the same position, yet you would be dissipating far more current through it. This kind of setup also means that you would have even finer precision. Because let's say um, it gets to the center, I want to go on to the next one. Instead of just turning on the next coil like that and having a somewhat sizable distance between centers, I could turn on this one and the previous one. So then my electromagnetic center is between the two coils. Now, and you could do this uh, outwards three or four more times or however many more times, and you could finally control where the electromagnetic center is um, even, even finer than the number of coils you have. So I've put uh, like a couple weeks of thought into this and I've, I've been poking holes in it in my mind and fixing the problems. And I do think that this has the greatest potential to create a, an efficient coil gun uh, of anything that I've seen or come up with personally or anything like that. And I assume that I'm n by no means the first person to, to come up with this realization. Um, it, it seems that anyone who put, would put a considerable amount of thought into this would eventually land on something like this. But there are a couple of issues that, that I've come up with, a couple of holes that I've been able to poke in this design. The first issue is with sight. It's, it's not an issue of the actual forces involved, it's an issue of information. Because you need to know pretty precisely where this, um, where this projectile is in order to be able to properly power the coils to pull it forward efficiently. Now the, the most typical way of detecting the projectile position inside of a coil gun is with uh, infrared uh, diodes and infrared LEDs. So then once it goes in front of it, it cuts the line and the resistance across the, the diode changes. The problem with this though is that it's too big, it's too clunky. The space required to have that, that light sensor in there, that essentially reflectivity sensor in there, would be pretty much cutting in half the number of coils in there. Because since the coils are so small, it goes coil sensor, coil sensor, and the sensors would be as wide as the coils pretty much, or at least that would be ideal. And that means that your barrel would have to be twice as long, and then you just have considerably larger distances between centers, and it's, it's not a good idea. It wouldn't work very well at all. So I started thinking about what are alternatives to the traditional sensor, and my first idea was a distance sensor. Sonar probably wouldn't be fast enough, so I thought about like a LiDAR sensor. The idea being that you had a, a, a laser distance sensor at the, at the back of the barrel that would shoot a laser all the way through it and then based off of that laser it would be able to determine how far the projectile is along the path. And I think this could potentially be a viable option. Um, it, it would be somewhat difficult just lining up the laser to perfectly go down the, the, the shaft and reflect back at an appropriate angle, but it'd certainly be doable. The problem though is, is with the communication. It's a data problem. The chips that allow you to do this kind of LiDAR sensing, they tend to have built-in communication protocols. And these hardwired communication protocols have time limits on them. So hypothetically, you could get you could get hundreds of thousands of distance data points per second um, of, of how far the projectile is using a LiDAR system, but the data protocols are limited to around 50 frames per second, 50 data points per second. And for something like a coil gun, you're trying to accelerate a projectile to extremely high speeds over a very short distance. That's very short acceleration. By the time a single uh, a single data point is, is calculated, you, the projectile may have traveled an inch. 
and then by that point you are you're way off you don't have any usable data you're behind it, it, it wouldn't work it'd be terrible so based off of those built-in communication protocols lidar would not work and then as i said earlier the um the light sensors wouldn't work just based off of increasing the distances so i couldn't think of any other way to detect it so i started thinking about well maybe you just use a blind system you have a system that doesn't actually know where the projectile is which initially to me sounds terrible like surely that wouldn't be efficient it'd be all over the place you'd have no control over it but i think for something like this in particular assuming it's done right it could work very, very well. So a blind system would just make assumptions about where it thinks the projectile is, or at least should be. So my initial thought would be like, well, you've got external forces. What about, let's just say gravity. And gravity could affect it. And now you don't really know where it is because you don't know if gravity is pulling it up if you're trying to shoot in the air or something, or if it's pulling it down, or, or if it's not affecting it at all, you just don't know. Um, so things like that. How can you how can you compensate for that? But in reality, the forces that these electromagnets would be applying to it are so far greater than forces like gravity or uh, I don't know a small centrifugal force or or whatever. Since these forces are so much greater, um, forces like gravity become pretty much negligible, or at least I I'm pretty sure they would, because this projectile would have to be accelerating so many times more then gravity, that gravity wouldn't really matter. But the real reason I think this could work is the constant force. So the idea here is that you can apply a, a at least relatively constant force throughout the travel of the projectile, saying is how your distance to centers can be kept pretty similar throughout. Um, but assuming you have a constant force on the projectile, you should know exactly where it is. I mean, you just do some of the simplest calculus possible and you can know where the projectile is exactly. So assuming the force remains constant, you should know exactly where it is and you should be able to control how fast you make the projectile go pretty easily. So if you were trying to dial in your, your coiled gun, uh, you would stick a projectile in, you would go into the code and tell it, I want it to accelerate at this rate. And then it'll, it'll do some super simple calculus, just take the derivative a couple times and say, okay, I know based off of this acceleration where it should be at any given time, and then turn on the coils according to those, according to those times. And then if it works, you take a, you take a, a reading off of the speed um, after the projectile leaves the, the, the barrel, and assuming they match what you think they should have been, you increase the speed a little bit and then see if it gets up to speed appropriately and then do it a little bit more and then check to see if it works, do a little more, check to see if it works, rinse and repeat until it doesn't quite meet where you think it should. And then at that point, you have met the, the maximum. Going beyond that point would just slow down the projectile or potentially not fire it at all, uh, just making it more inefficient. But once you get to that point where the speed starts to not match what you expect it to be based off of the derivative of your acceleration, then, then you've reached the maximum. That is what your coil gun can produce. And again, I assumed a blind system would be ridiculous for something as precise as this, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem at all, I don't think. The other issue that I came up with with this kind of system is with heat or specifically heat dissipation so since we are applying a constant acceleration to the projectile that means it will reside in the back of the barrel for far longer than it resides in the beginning of the barrel what this means is that the coils at the back will be on for much longer for, than the uh than the those at the front and of course much longer is relative we're talking about milliseconds here but Two milliseconds as compared to one millisecond when you're drawing 500 amps is pretty considerable. So my, so I started to think about how you could maybe alter the coil geometry to make it so that those at the front would heat up at the same rate as those at the back or something like that. But I realized what I was doing would fundamentally change how the projectile accelerates 
and or it would just be making it less efficient for certain coils, which is which is just not what I'm going for. So I, I realize that what only makes sense for something like this as far as cooling goes is just that you have a cooling system that favors the back. If you have uh, you have electronics fans or, or whatever it is, you would just shift them backwards so that they're focusing mostly on the back and secondarily on the front. And that should solve the problem pretty much. So that's the theory behind this new hypothetically very efficient uh, coil gun design. I'm beginning to accumulate ideas about how I can design each of these barrel modules, um, these very thin barrel modules. I'm not super set on how it should be done, what's the best way to do it, but I did make a quick CAD model just to visually show you what I've been thinking about. So I'll show you that now. Okay, so I'm in Fusion 360 here, and this is just a quick model that I that I made to, to try and explain to you what I'm thinking for these barrel modules. So you can see that green plate in the background. Uh, this is just representing a circuit board. So I'm thinking there would just be a circuit board back there, which is kind of a backing to the coil. And then, of course, this uh, this big copper thing here would is just representing the coil. This here is probably thicker than it would actually be, ideally be a little bit thinner. And then the, the current idea is that on the circuit board here at the bottom, we would have some sort of, of MOSFET or IGBT um, thyristor, whatever, just a big um, driver that can handle high currents that would be on the, on the circuit board itself. And then there would be some other small circuitry on the PCB, probably um, just SMD stuff to help drive whatever current transistor it is. So again, the idea is that the coil is as thin as possible. So what I'm thinking is that each coil will have an individual uh, MOSFET for it, or, or not necessarily MOSFET, whatever it is, and will have the drive circuitry in the actual barrel module. And in this, format here, the only real limitation to the thickness of the coil, or at least the limitation to how small it is, is the thickness of the MOSFET. So what I'm thinking is you'll have whatever big current transistor down here, and then your coil will be just thick enough to allow for that, that MOSFET or IGBT or whatever to fit in there. So the whole thing, this whole barrel module might only be somewhere between five to 10 millimeters thick. And then you'd have your your carbon fiber tube. Oh, by the way, I've been using carbon fiber just because it has no ferromagnetic properties and things like uh, copper or aluminum will eddy currents can form in it, which can slow down the projectile, things like that. So ca carbon fiber tube, the barrel module would just slide over the carbon fiber tube and then you just have 20 or 30 more of them all lined up. I'm also thinking for this that there would probably be some bus bars on the on the sides of this uh, um, MOSFET or IGBT or whatever down here. So on both sides, there would just be a couple of thick pieces of copper to handle the high current. One of them would be positive and one of them would be ground. But I'm not totally set on this. Um, I don't have a lot of ideas for this right now. If anyone would like to give me some ideas on how I could design this thin module, I would be much appreciative. My concerns with this is that the coil really has nothing keeping it in place. I would like each of the modules to be able to exist outside of the carbon fiber barrel um, and not fall apart. But right now, if you had a coil like this, it would unravel like crazy. So there needs to be some way to hold the coil in without increasing the, the width on the center here so that the coil is as close to the diameter of the barrel as possible. I'm not totally sure what kind of uh, transistor should be here. I've heard talk of thyristors. Um, my go-to would be MOSFETs or IGBTs because I'm more familiar with them. And then one of the big issues with this is heat dissipation. So if you wanna dissipate heat from the coil, that's not too difficult because it's kind of right up against where the edge of that uh, circuit board is. So you could have like something like an aluminum tube that goes over it, which would, and then you can just cool the aluminum tube and it would act as kind of a really big heat sink. Um, but the, the, the MOSFET or whatever doesn't have that luxury. 
So I'm not totally sure how you would how you would implement some sort of heat sink or at least some kind of cooling system that would be able to effectively cool these uh, these transistors, which is very important. They need to be they really need to be cooled because we're going to be running hundreds of amps through here. Um, granted, only for a very short amount of time, but still a ton of current, a ton of power. They need to be able to be cooled down somehow. And I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't really like to have just an array of of electronics cooling fans under it because I can't figure out how to get a heat sink in there. So I need a way to contain the electromagnet. I need some way to dissipate heat from the from the transistor. I need a way to implement bus bars onto this so that each one can attach to the bus bars. I need to figure out what transistor I'm actually going to use. And the biggest issue right now, the real reason I haven't just gone gun ho and started designing this thing is because I don't know how many turns the electromagnet should have. This this has been something that I've been thinking about for like months and I, I really need to do some research on it. I, I don't know how to figure it out. The, the issue here is that you want the strongest electromagnet for the least amount of current, thus making it the most efficient. So if I increase the number of turns, then I increase the resistance of the wire pretty much proportionally. So adding more turns is good because you have more turns, making it a stronger electromagnet, but it also means that you have less current, again proportionally, so then making it a weaker electromagnet. The strength of an electromagnet is measured in amp turns, so you double the turns, well that's good, you'd be increasing the strength of the electromagnet, but then you're also having the amperage, so then you're decreasing the strength of it. So at what point, how do I figure out how many turns is the ideal, is actually most efficient and most powerful for the least amount of current? If I just have a single turn as an electromagnet, that's not going to be much of an electromagnet at all. Even if you're running a ton of amperage through it, it's not going to do much because it's just a single turn. It might as well just be a plain wire. Then again, if I have really thin gauge wire but 10,000 windings, even, even if it's sufficient voltage, the current is going to be so low that it's not going to do anything. It might as well, you might as well not have any, any current running through it at all. So at that point, again, it's not going to be a, a strong electromagnet. So at both extremes, you have very low. So I'm fairly certain that this, that this problem has to be modeled as some sort of a bell curve. Starts out really low, gets up to some peak somewhere. I don't know where the peak is, that's the problem. And then comes back down um, once you get too many windings. So if anyone could help me with anything on this project, right now what I need the most is some kind of guidance on how to figure out the ideal number of turns. If someone could point me to a paper I could read or a video I could watch or just if you feel you understand it enough that you could explain it directly, that would be extremely appreciated. I, I really need to figure this out and I don't really feel comfortable moving on if, if I don't understand this concept. So there you have it. That is, that's, that's what I've been thinking about for the past two or three weeks for this coil gun. There, that's the explanation for the new idea for the coil gun design, um, my ideas for the barrel module, and my concerns, hopefully, hopefully someone can help me, point me in the right direction so I can figure out this, this, uh, this electromagnet turn issue. Once I get that figured out, I'll be really able to start designing the circuit boards, assuming I am going to use circuit boards, and really getting some stuff finalized so I can start testing. But I hope you enjoyed something here or learned a little bit of something along the way. That's all I have for now. Bye. I'm pretty sure that counts as an ollie.